thank you very much. Uh, yeah, it was brought forward, uh, and if I fall asleep, I apologise. Getting up at four o'clock in the morning is not fun. All right, um, I'm not <laughs> talking about the sexy tall buildings. I'm talking about the dirty end of the bit, the, in the industry. Um, Modernisation. There are, in my opinion, there are no standards, recommendations that are worthwhile on the marketplace, uh, except for a few um, little bits. BS5655, the new lifts, gives very good requirements for what the, the building owner should do in structural terms, where people are involved, uh, architectural building services. This is not in a this is not available for the modernisation. So we've got a lot of challenges. Um, I've got Adam's elephant there, but uh, and a rhinoceros. I don't know why, but never mind. Um, there's challenges. There's available information, but not very good information, in my opinion. Uh, you, know, you, can you can talk to me afterwards about this. All right. In Simply Guide D, which is a very good book, very good, apart from the part of modernisation where the, the, the committee, and if they want to hit me, they can, said a refurbishment is usually less expensive than a full replacement, but that may not be extend the life of the lift by more than a few years. In the long term, it could be more expensive. Now, I don't know why that came about, but in my opinion, and talking to my colleagues around the industry, that is not, that is not a correct statement. George Strakos, who I had the pleasure of meeting a couple of times, said, Building management expects the from the elevator modernisation and uh, there's a major reduction in elevator downtime. This is accomplished through greater reliability of new components in this modernisation section. I agree with that. This is my book. It's just been published again, uh, just uh, because it's been. Uh, it gives it, it's one of the design guides. And it gives life expectancy, so we will cover all that. I can't give discounts. Um, <laughs> all right, in eighty one eighty. It says the objective is to try to improve the safety of existing lifts by risk assessment, but it does not go as far as referring to modernisation. In my opinion, AT is a sales tool. It doesn't go to modernisation. It talks about um, emergency lighting, lighting levels, buttons, braille, various other things, but it doesn't actually refer to modernisation. It doesn't even hint at modernisation. It just says improvement. So then we've got the uh, ELA document, which is again the same, it, it lists 74 associated items, but, no but makes no reference to modernisation. And modernisation is so big around the world that the, si the risks are important, but the, the actual overall concept of modernisation is not. And this is, where my, this is where my concern is. And we've had a lot of experience recently of modernisations which are lacking. And Leah, and their document, says the complex change lift modernization was clearly identified as a hot topic, which is good. Our industry has many technical roles from design and engineering to troubleshooting and testing. All roles are equally important, which is good. But since 2016, I haven't seen any improvement in the, the skill levels of the modernization contractors. It's sales orientated. But uh, you know, at least Leah are saying it is important, you know, which is a good thing. Right. So when we get down to the fundamental questions of modernisation, it's who is responsible for the checking and verifying. For instance, the structural design. Can it withstand the new loadings of the slab? The guide rail fixings. When we put new guide, when we put existing guide rails in, or existing, guide rails, we put new safety gears in. Will they withstand the, the forces of the safety gear test, uh, di di dynamic overspeed conditions? And finally, do you accept? And that's everybody. That without further investigation, the existing building structure, electrical supplies, and retained lift equipment are all suitable for a modernised lift. Are we saying a building that was put in 1920, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80? The structure engineer got the design right. Are we just saying we'll put a new we'll put a new machine in? We'll put new we'll we'll accept the um, uh, the electrical loading characteristics. In my opinion, no. We've had too many problems with this, especially from the do you accept? And this is what the lift companies are doing. And I apologise for the lift companies for saying this. They they accept that the building's been there for 20 years, 30 years. We'll accept the new machines, and I'll come to that later. 
with we're now in a, an overheated world of not only new lifts but modernizations and from our opinion my opinion especially is that when we go out for tender the lift companies are not doing good surveys they're doing poor surveys and they're working on a percentage of success rates they're putting 10 modernization tenders in a month maybe get one so they are submitted with limited or basic surveys and the full survey is only undertaken when they've got when they get the order and then all of a sudden we get oh we found this out you know the client is a very high risk to the client we don't want to put in provisional sums in 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 tenders because it means we're not we're not doing our job but we should have a basic the survey should be more than a basic looking at the looking at the equipment right so what we're going to look today is the the four um, five five risks the the corrosion of equipment which is a major issue the guide rail fixings in the machine room slab the tolerance of verticality of the lift shaft electrical supply load ins and air conditioning refrigerants in cars and motor rooms may not may not be in that order but that's what we're looking at there may be others and they may but they come up across but these are the, these are the main issues we've come out across with in the last 12 months, 18 months, two years. All right, general corrosion. Just a picture of general corrosion, rust in other words, coming off, and that came off a lifting beam. That wasn't found out until after the lift company had done the survey. And we're going back a little bit, the more modernization is becoming turnkey. We're just giving the lift contractor the work, you're responsible, for everything, you know, here's an order for X amount of thousands of pounds. You can you employ the electrical contractors, the subcontractors, all of them. Uh, that shows to me that originally the survey wasn't done. Otherwise, that would have been brought up. But then again, if it's brought up, someone has put extra money in the tender. They may not have lost it. They may have lost it. They've got the order, so now they're asking extra money. All right, corrosion cracks. Not very often, but it's happened. You see quite quite often this in direct acting hydraulics and if that and that was one that was pulled out and luckily it it, um, it came out completely otherwise you'd have down the borehole uh, about a half a meter of steel which you don't know what to do with could do ultrasonic testing on that to find out but that's a, that's a, that is a risk and then the most common one is paint corrosion this is just a normal machine what are you going to do it are you going to paint it are you going to treat it how much of that corrosion has gone in? Is it going to become a crack of corrosion? All right, the guide rail fixings. Now, the guide rail fixings are important, obviously, but they could be, in the UK and around the world, they could be put in by rag bolts. They could be round guides. Does anybody check during the survey that the condition of these gu guide rail brackets are correct? Here there is... Apologies, there's a button here for that. Wrong one. Right, I can't find it. Um, the guide rail brackets, they're in unit strut inserts on this, on this particular one. How good are those unit strut inserts? Has anybody checked that the, the, the pull out forces are correct? Are the guide brackets, are they, can they be used without modification when the safety gear goes in? Because we've seen guide rail brackets come out from the wall quite often. In, in old, very old lifts, especially when you're using rag bolts. Again, if it had done a quick survey, we would have found this out without any problems. All right, now this is an in interesting one. This is a group of three geared machines with the load-ins, which luckily we had the drawings for. There's no, uh, so we know those we know those drawings from the original lift line. They were as fitted, so. We we have got those load-ins. Uh, the old machine weights is 2,400 kilos and 2,400. All, they're all the same. Sorry, what one's the button for the... Oh, apologies. Wrong one. I've lost it. Ah, right. Go back. Right. We've got these load-ins here, which look quite good. Now, even if we didn't have the load-ins, I'm lucky in my team to have some very good engineers who can re-back engineer and back calculate what the load is. You don't actually need the, the calculation. Uh, we, we, know rough, we know the ballpark figure. 
if we put the new machines in, the load-ins are those load-ins. These are the load-ins there. And a slightly different way of doing that. Which, on, on first of all, it doesn't look too bad. But then when you overlay the old machines with the new machines, you can see 14 kilonewtons there. Well, that one's quite 62 against 6. 65 against 156. They're all in different positions. They, those load paths are now totally different to what the original structure was designed for. The only thing that's standard on here would be there or the where the rope holes are. Now, do we accept, without question, putting a new machine onto existing slab when you've got these load ins? We said no. We had to re engineer and put transfer structures in there. And this is not just one off job, this has happened quite a few times. And the lift speed hasn't changed. It's still 1.6. They're still the same uh, 1,600 kg. But look at the, the load-ins are in totally different places. And that's m that is my concern of all this, is we can't accept the existing structure is acceptable for it. All right. Tolerance of verticality of lift shafts. Is there a problem? No. Yes, there is. This is, this is uh, one that... Uh, well, we had this a couple of times recently, that a modernised lift, slightly bigger car, whoops, we can't get the lift car past up to the top floor because the original lift shaft was bowed. So they had to scabble out about three floors just to get the lift shaft, to get it in. Now, if that had been carried out, if they'd done a survey correctly, that would have been brought out. Even if they got on top of the lift car, it would have been noticed. It wasn't. So there's a lot of work carried out on here just to get that lift car in. And um, I think the clearance between the back of the car when it goes past here is lef less than 20 mil. Because if we went any further than that, we'd be in the rebar. We can't even skim it because we reduce the, you know, it, we're in the wor a catch-22 situation. Now, what, we all, what we're trying to do, and we've done it quite successful, is put an, a lift shaft cloud survey. It costs a lot of money, but on a tall building, it's worth, worth it. So you can see where the guide rails are. You can see where the, where the red is, here where it comes out of verticality. We've used this quite a few times, and it work, it's worth every penny of it. And it means that the lift company have got to employ a cloud survey consultant to do it. It's not cheap, but you know, at the end of it, it is the worst, it's the best thing you can do. Because we've had it bowed out at the front, bowed out at the side, and all of a sudden you've got a, a delay on a project. Electrical supply load-ins. Mm. This is typical. We've got an isolator here of vintage, probably... 1960s, I'm not sure. We've got the existing pyro, I think it's there. We've got a new distribution board here. We've got other, th other services. Um, Depending on those of the lift company because they're just in the maintenance. Quite often, the lift companies will say to us, it's not our responsibility. It's up to someone else to do the, to do the modernization. This was, this was, we went to for a due diligence, and this was carried out after a modernization. Everything here was existing. The modernization should have been replacing that. The consumer unit should have been in place. This should have been in place. None of them, co none of them modern code compliant. And this is the problem where you have turnkey situations or non-turnkey, where the lift company say, it's not our responsibility, it's someone else's. And it's a, it is a concern, because we're putting people's lives at risk. The why do I put, mo why do I put air conditioning, refrigerants in lift cars and motor rooms. Uh, the reason is, prior to 2004, you could use a, a, a um, refrigerant called R R22. It's been banned. It's dangerous. But this part here, they're self-contained. They're in lift motor rooms. They're very rarely a part of the FM contractor's responsibility. So those, that air conditioning unit could be 20, 30 years old. Ones under lift, underneath lift cars could even be longer. And the reason they're longer is they're so difficult normally to maintain. 
and quite often we'll get air conditioning units under lift car, panoramic lift cars that have never worked for, for, for months, years, because you've got to replace the filters every six months if it's external. And the maintenance companies don't have enough money in their maintenance budget to replace filters and change the air. So that there is important. You know, by using old equipment, you're putting, lot pe you're putting the environment at risk. And you should, the, air the lift companies should employ ref professional refrigeration engineers when they have that, again, in a turnkey situation. All right, so it's very quick, but the conclusions. The lift modernizations, in my opinion, should be treated as equal to new lifts, as a viable option to establish long-term long life expectancy. We're getting too many people going the, what they consider to be the easy option by saying, we'll put a new lift in, we'll rip it out, we'll put, put something in. And I talked, to, I think it's a couple of years ago, about the art of modernization. It's not the rest thing. We've had recently a grade one listed building and a lift contractor has said, we will rip out this 1923 lift and put a package lift in, which we can get for 80,000 pounds from Greece. You know, I'm serious about this. This happened yesterday. I was talking to my colleagues last night about it. This happened yesterday morning in the office. You know, sec new lifts are easy. You don't even got to do very much about them. You just put in. Modernization are difficult, and we just haven't got the skill sets to do it in the industry. And we're talking about the industry as a whole. We need more professional, qualified engineers. I know l um, Northampton do a very good degree course on uh, for lift engineering, but we need more people at the grassroots level getting good qualifications, especially when we start talking about turnkey situations. We're not, we're not getting that. We're getting the person who was, a f no disrespect, a fitter that started his own lift company and just puts everything in and hopes for the best. And I don't know where you saw, just digressing, I don't know where you saw, there's a, uh, a notice from Ireland Health and Safety that a lift company has put a CE mark in and, it and the CE mark doesn't exist. They're putting lift in for it. Uh, so there's, there's there are uh, not, not to say there's a lot of cowboys, but there are some cowboys around. Um, and also, the, build, the lift company needs to be looking at the building as a whole, not just their little bit, what's in the lift shaft, in the hoistway. They've got to look at the whole building because the, the lift is a part of the building. If we have air conditioning that breaks down, we put a fan. If a lighting breaks down, we, could, we can use a light. If a lift breaks down, we've got no option. We've, we've got to get it working, right? And, and also, we've got to improve the quality of lift modernization pr publication. There is no good lift pro standard around. Everybody's up to, their, up to their own devices saying, well, we think it's a good practice. There's nothing around. And talking, just go digressing about what Rory was saying earlier about the guide rails in, in um, earthquakes. We were last week on, on the site and the, guide ra the, sa the safety gear came in before we got there and the guide rails were bent and the, sa the safety gear came out of the guide rails. And that was on the new lift installation. So you know, when you're talking about modernization, using existing lifts, we've got to be very, very important. It's, it, uh, it's safety, 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 but not as a sales tool. I know that's a quick one, but you know, it's, um, it's my opinion. If you don't like it, don't stab, <coughs> in the, don't stab me in the back. <coughs>